<clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Brothers and sisters coming together to celebrate the love of Christ, let us acknowledge our sins and ask God's forgiveness. And also let us pray for the peace and reconciliation and the, that God may protect this nation as we are in the election day, that the Holy Spirit may guide and strengthen peace and love and the forgiveness for each and every one, citizens of this blessed country. So let us ask our loving God to be with us, to forgive us for all our past and the present failures. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your, your faithful offer you, ride and praise words your service. Grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have among yourselves the same attitude that is also yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear him. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts be ever merry. I will praise you, Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nation shall bow bound before him. I will praise you, Lord. For dominion is the Lord's, and he rules the nations. To him alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth. I will praise you. To him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will praise you, Lord.
<clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of those at table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is the one who will dine in the kingdom of God. He replied to him, I mean, a, a man gave a great dinner to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his servants to say to those invited, Come, everything is now ready. But one by one, they all began to excuse themselves. The first said to him, I have purchased a field and must go to examine it. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to evaluate them. I ask you, consider my excuse. And another said, I have just married a woman, and therefore I cannot come. The servant went and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house in a raid commanded his servant, go out quickly into the streets and allies of the town and bring in here the poor and the scrippled, the blind and the lame. The servant reported, Sir, be feel it. For I tell you, None of those men who were invited will taste my dinner. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel we have heard from St. Luke is more or less repeated in the same way by St. Matthew, as we read it in the 22nd, uh, on the chapter 28, 22, from verse 1 to 14. And if you remember, we have also read it, that of St. Matthew, on the 28th uh, Sunday. So we, we, we heard this from Matthew's Gospel or Matthew's version of the parable of the great feast. It is about the invitation. The invitation to the great feast. The king sends out invitations to his people to be part in the, in, the, in the feast. But both Gospels, St. Matthew and the Luke, they tell us the first round of guests give excuses for not attending the wedding feast in St. Matthew. They say, I have to take care of my cattle. I have been the two. Some simply ignored the invitation and went about their lives. This is what we read in the Gospel of St. Matthew. The guests in St. Luke, as we have heard, offer the same excuses. I have to take care of my field. I have to go see about this stuff I just bought. I just go, I, I just got married. If we see the king was inviting these people for dinner or for special great feast, how can they, they ignore? It is not natural, it is not 
the usual way people do when they are invited. And especially when they respond to that, I will come. I will respect your invitation. Thank you for inviting me. But at the last minute, they cannot change their mind unless that is something great thing they can do. So, the excuses we hear in the Gospel of St. Luke is not that much reasonable. What we see is, where are your priorities? You can ask those people, what is your priority? Because the cat will still be there if you have bought new oxen and then you wanted to uh, practice with them and they can be there, they can wait. The field will be there, the new field you have bought. The wife will still be there. So where, where is their priority? And that is what the gospel wants us to read, our priorities in life. To cause us to examine our priorities. Every time we choose sin over virtue, We are not doing the right way. Every time we are given by God an opportunity to serve the kingdom and we make some excuses, we are setting for something less. We are refusing the invitation to the great feast to fulfillment. It is important to see every day is a day of invitation. Every day, every morning when we wake up, God invites us. And we have to respond. We should not make excuses. The best way as we read it in the gospel and in the whole scripture is when people respond rightly to God, then better thing comes, blessing comes. So early in the morning when we wake up, let us see it in that way. God is inviting me to do the right thing. The parable is certainly addressed to those who were refusing to believe in Jesus to the Pharisees, to the religious leaders, to those who are listening to him. They, those who were refusing to believe in Jesus and the invitation to follow him. They are given excuses for rejecting the invitation to, the, to discipleship, to a Christian, to Christian conversion. But as I said, it is also addressed all of us who make excuses for rejecting deeper conversion, deeper holiness. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 3 and verse 20, we read that God knocks us in the, heart, in the door of our heart. He wants, he asks us to enter in our heart, in our life. So if we open our heart for God who is knocking, then blessing, holiness comes. Peace and love reigns in our life. So today, that is the word of God. What we hear is inviting us to listen to what God is asking and to accept what God is asking too. 
So on this special day, as we are in election day, I think it is very important to think about this gospel too. God can speak to us in many ways. To be truthful in our life as citizens of this country. To be honest, to be God loving first. Who do we put first? If we put God first, then we will never have any problem to choose the right thing. But if we put our priority only for our personal uh, uh, things and uh, our priorities are for other things, then we missed the truth. So let us be united, especially as we offer this great mass for this country, for reconciliation, for peace, for justice, for all those difficulties we are seeing in, in many ways, that God may change the situation. And we have to pray also for those who are to be elected. No matter who they are, we have to pray for God. God is the one who can do the right thing for us. Most of the time we think we are those who can do that. So this is a very special time for all of us. So let us pray. Because the power of prayer is that it can change things. Things cannot change by words only. Things cannot change by human works only. God is the only one who can change things for us. And that is what we believe. So being united in prayer that brings blessing and all the things which we see can change for the better for all of us. So may the Holy Spirit help us to see our excuses for what they are. May he help us to identify those areas where the king is inviting us to something more. And may help us to be like, like that servant whom the king sends out into the highways. And he grows and to invite the poor, the hungry, and the lost to the wedding feast of the Lamb for the glory of God and for the salvation of souls. Trusting in God, let us present our prayers to him. For church leaders, may God draw them ever closer to himself in their mission of spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God give them the grace to work toward peace among nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are on the fringe of society, may the Lord provide for the acceptance and help that they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this faith community engaged in educating young people, may the Lord bless their service and dedication. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially for all the souls in our novena, may they feast forever at the heavenly table of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful, loving God, we present these prayers before you, and we ask you to guide us, to lead us in our way of life, especially as we have heard the word of your Son, that we may respect the invitation you give us every day to be faithful to you. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever, his humble spirit, and contrite heart, and be accepted by you. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day pleasing to God the Lord. <clears throat> Wash me, O Lord, of my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice of your hands. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, you, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and the Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling in your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift as we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body 
and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and the minister to you. Humble we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, <coughs> we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, Isabis and Daniel Auxiliary Bishops, Peter Sartan, retired bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be chorus eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who so said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, 
ye take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, ye take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy just to enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the blood of Christ 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 The blood of Christ. 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 The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May the working of your power in us, we pray, so that renewed by the heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Proclaim.